Welcome back everyone. I'm going to change gears a little bit today. So I'd really like to get the Ural out on the road a little more. Uh, I've only taken it out for some little basic trips around the block, uh, just a few miles at a time. Uh, I've got a lot of things I want to go explore with it. Um, I'm actually not too far from a big chunk of the Santa Fe Trail here, so I know there's some old towns that uh, are kind of forgotten, places that uh, had their heyday and have since uh, kind of disappeared into history. Some of them are still inhabited, some of them not so much, but either way, there are a lot of old bridges and some old ruts in the, in the ground, and then the old stopover points uh, where the springs used to be. So I want to take the bike out and see if I can take a look at some of those. So I've got a couple of upgrades I want to do to try to make that work better. One, and the biggest one, is this. So I got this rear cargo rack. Yes, I've got a sidecar bike here, and I could very easily use the rack over here on top of the spare tire if I wanted to, to hold things. But what I want to do with this, now I'm sure a bunch of you who have ridden motorcycles in the heat, uh, here it gets to well over 100 degrees sometimes, and you know, even if I'm not wearing full protective gear, which I really want to do, now it's still going to get awfully hot in those temperatures, so I've been looking at some of the cooling vests and technology available to try to keep me a little more comfortable on this bike. And what I'm looking at is the one that uses the cooler that sits behind you. Um, I know it kind of tethers you to the bike a little bit, and I may decide I don't like it in the long run, but for now, I think it's going to work out great, and I'd like to order one. It also has a longer duration on it, um, somewhere between 4 and 8 hours, depending on who you look at. So I'd love to see if that's at all possible, and uh, see what I can do with it. But anyway, I kind of wanted a rack to help protect the rear fender, protect the rear light. Yeah, I know I've got a uh, guard on there anyway. And then hopefully uh, give me a place to put something like that. So I'm not 100% sure if this actually fits on this bike. So I've tried playing with it a little bit, see if I can figure out the location. So these front bolt holes line up or are supposed to line up with the bolts on the top of the springs here okay so apparently you don't have to take off the handle yeah the hand holds here and I don't intend to so I'm hoping I can just drop these down inside uh, somewhere up in here or along the outside I'll have to play with that a little bit and see how it lines up the rear brackets here are supposed to line up with these bolts down here on the fender now the thing that's strange about this, at least just trying to fit it in without actually taking anything off, these don't seem to line up. Now I'm sure it does because the bike really hasn't changed all that much over the years, so even though this is a 22, I'm guessing it does line up. But anyway, I'm going to uh, see if I can remove some of this hardware and just get an idea of what I'm looking at here. Uh, I think I'm also going to put it up on the on the stand just so I can take the pressure off of the suspension. So when I take this off, it shouldn't be a problem. So your kickstand or your service stand is here. So you push down on this and you can roll the bike backwards and up onto the stand. So let me do that and we'll uh, see what we can do from there. The other piece I want to see if I can install is this guy right here. So this is a trailer adapter. So like I said before, I've got the Calabar winch mount bar on here and obviously from the back here you could attach a trailer to this so I want the ability to tow a small trailer with uh, potentially my canoe or kayak on the back of it and we've got some lakes in the area I'd love to be able to use this as uh, a method to tow that as well so the problem is obviously your four flat trailer connector is not designed to connect to a lighting system like this so our turn signals are a completely separate circuit. Our tail lights and brake lights are here. So I need to convert that over to a four flat system. So what you do, you use something like this. So this has circuitry in here to both protect the bike and to make sure that uh, the circuits interface correctly. So what we have, make sure you can see what I'm looking at here. So this green wire here goes to the right turn signal. Brown goes to your tail lights. Yellow goes to your left turn signal. White is your ground. And 
thread here. There we go. So I've got a three wire system, so I'm going to attach the red wire to the stop lights. And actually, now that I think about it, I'm not entirely sure if I truly have a have that system. I need to remove this and see what's going on internally for the lighting. So, there are a couple of ways to do this. I think what I'm going to try to start with is just remove the cover from the tail light and the turn signal and just see what options I have, see if I can access the wiring there. There's also a plug up in here that I might be able to access. The problem is there's not a lot of extra wire there, so I may see if I can unbolt this entire thing. So when I put the light guard on, there are two bolts up here that go through the fender, and then you've got a bolt down here, and one to match on the other side over here. So the problem is, <clears throat> this light guard, I'm not entirely sure it was actually designed to go on this bike, so it was a really tight fit. It is designed for the Ural, yes, but I think the 22 might have a slightly different orientation of uh, hardware back here. Uh, I can't imagine that it was truly designed to be quite this hard. But anyway, um, I'll play with it a little bit. I think I'm going to completely unbolt this tail light and see what I can come up with. And then, if I can get everything I need from here, then I need to access the tail light over here. So, let me see what we got in here. Yeah. So we got wiring up in here as well. Let me see if I can turn the light on for you. There we go. So right up there is the wiring harness that goes out to this light. So I'm hoping that up behind here, yeah. Okay, Let's see if I can turn you so you can see it. It looks like I can access that as well. So on this one, all I have to do, there are two bolts, one up top and one down here underneath that I can remove to take this light housing off. So this one should be a lot easier to get to. Now that I think about it, I can get my tail and brake lights off of this side as well. So we'll see. I can always extend the wires if necessary, but uh, I'll see what I can fish through. I also haven't quite decided where I want to mount the unit itself. Initially, I thought I wanted to put it in the trunk in the sidecar, but it does mean that I have to punch more holes in the sidecar to run the wiring through. Uh, it's waterproof. It's definitely been, uh, been treated to keep it that way. So I can mount it externally as long as I've got a place to put it. So we'll see. I'll take some things apart and try to get an idea of what options I have. So I'll check back in with you in a little bit. I do want to get some of this wiring figured out before I put the rack on behind the seat. Obviously, the more steel I've got up here to deal with, the more complicated it's going to be to get into that housing. So let me see what options I've got and uh, I'll start working on it and let you know. All right, I think I've got some options here. So I took the lenses off a couple of these lights. So here on the left turn signal, this brown wire is the ground. You can tell because it's connected to the outer housing of the light socket. Over here, we've got a little black wire that's connected to this little attachment point here. This one is the hot for the left turn signal. There's also enough room going through this tube that I can run the wire through. I think what I may end up doing actually is uh, I'm going to disconnect these. I've got the battery disconnected so it shouldn't cause me any trouble. And I'm going to disconnect those, pull the whole thing through, and in here you can see the other end, the other end of the wiring. So I'm going to pull it out and see if I can strip a little bit of this insulation away and maybe attach up inside. Um, I think that'll make the most sense. We'll see. So I decided not to take this light apart here on this side. Um, I know that up underneath here, let me see if I can show you what this looks like. Up underneath here, it would be very easy to tie into this. There's definitely wiring back there. It's definitely easy to get to. So I'm only choosing not to do it because I want to leave this on here. And I'm doing that because I don't know yet if that rack is going to fit. If I knew it did, I'd probably take this light guard off. It's just uh, kind of superfluous at that point. You've got a guard down here, and I'll have a nice rack sitting on top. 
But um, what I do have on the other side over here is everything else I need. So I took this light housing off. You can see the wiring here. There's plenty of it, and it's easy to get to. So what you have here, this purple wire, is the right turn signal. Down in here, the green and the yellow, one of these is the tail light, and one of these is the brake light. So all I need to do is meter these against the ground, which is brown. Make sure you can see that down in there. So I need to meter these two at the socket against the ground when I've got um, <clears throat> the brake lights on or just the tail lights on. So I'll need to temporarily reconnect the battery to make that happen. But once I know what each of these are, then I can easily splice into these, in fact, right here behind the light housing, and run the wiring. Here's the only problem with this technique. This wiring, sorry about the wind noise, goes up inside the fender up in here and runs along a metal track up along the entire inside of the fender all the way around the front goes down and comes out here so this is your brake line this is your wiring down here underneath the step so <clears throat> It's going to mean a lot of wiring that I've got to run. It goes over here, goes under the sidecar, and should come out somewhere on the other side over here. So that's a lot of wiring I have to run in order to make that happen. Obviously, I've got to get there for the turn signal anyway, but that's going to mean lengthening the rest of these quite a bit. So we'll see. I haven't quite decided. I still think I may take that housing off and see if I can get most of what I need from there. It'll just make it easier. The other thing is where to mount the brain. So <clears throat> what I think I may end up doing is I think I'm going to put this inside the trunk. It will mean drilling a hole big enough for the wiring to go through, um, but I think it's going to be the best option. So. Let me play with some more things a little bit, and uh, I'll get back with you here shortly. Okay, I don't know what I was so scared of. When I put that guard on, there was a lot of spring tension on it. It was like it was compressed too much. So I had to pull the two bottom portions out in order to get them to line up with the hardware. And it took quite a bit of effort to make it happen. But apparently it's been on there long enough that uh, it must like that new shape. So it wasn't an issue at all. So... This is your rear light housing. So what we have here, this little black wiring harness here is the one that goes to the turn signal out here. So the black wire is the hot for the turn signal, left turn signal. The brown in here, this is all ground. Then down here going into the tail light assembly, we have a green and a yellow. So I'm going to take a look at those. One of those has to be brake light, the other one has to be tail light. So now, right here where I want it, I've got everything I need except the right turn signal, which I have to get from the other side of the sidecar. But at least this means that I only have to run one wire all the way over there, and if I put the control unit for the trailer brakes inside the trunk or somewhere down here near where the hitch is, then most of my wiring is going to be really short. I only have to go from somewhere in here over to this tail light so that should not be a problem at all in fact i've already got a wiring harness running down this rear support on the sidecar here so i can certainly pop these uh, tie wraps and run my wiring here and just run it down to this position to get it where i want it to go so it should be easy enough i might even consider the possibility of mounting that thing on the front of the uh, fuel can mount here or actually right down here there's lots of room I could put some hardware in there piece of cake so I think we got an option and I think it's gonna work out better this way so let me work a little more and show you what it looks like okay let me give you an update on wire color so the green one here this is your brake light the yellow that's your running light or your tail light and the black is the hot lead to the left turn signal, brown is ground. So if you're going to attach trailer wiring back to this situation back here on the rear fender, that's what you're dealing with. 
and obviously over here on the other side, our right turn signal is this light purple going here to the side light. Okay, so those are the ones you're going to need, going to, need to tap into for trailer wiring. And remember, make sure that it's a device that can handle separate turn signals like the one that I've got here. So I'm going to start cutting some things and splicing into this. I've got a mess of extra wire here from you know, some leftover projects. I'm just going to start running the wires. But I think I've decided I'm going to place this box right down here. Let me make sure you can see this. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to place this right down here on the front of the fuel canister. So it does mean that some of my wiring is considerably longer than it needs to be. Primarily, the wiring that goes to the trailer harness itself. That is built for a truck or something like it, so I'm going to cut that down because uh, it doesn't need to go very far on this bike. Basically, I just need to get from the front of this container right here down around the underside to here. And my plan is to just tie wrap the thing to the bar here so it doesn't go anywhere. So let me get some wiring done and I'll show you what it looks like in a second. Okay, this is definitely one of those do what I say and not what I do moments. So apparently I wasn't thinking when I was attaching the new wires to the old. So I screwed up the wiring. Uh, the information I gave you about which wires on the bike do what is definitely correct. However, um, I was trying to use appropriate uh, wire colors for trailer wiring when I extended some of these, and I got it all mixed up. So here's what I did. The yellow wire here is definitely the left turn signal. That's about the only correct one on the bike. This red wire here, I had intended to use as the stoplight circuit, but I realized after I got some things connected that I actually connected the red here to the tail lights. Brown, which under normal circumstances would be tail lights, I connected to the brake light circuit. So, I'm kind of doing this to help remind myself, since I don't know when I'm going to get around to finishing this project, but I want to make sure that I don't uh, screw up again when I connect these to the unit. So, brown on the left side of the bike is brake lights. Red is tail lights, and yellow is appropriately the left turn signal. Here's the other problem. I figured I needed more wire than I had, so over here on the right side I did get some little pieces of green, but I didn't figure they were going to be long enough, so I had a lot of extra brown, so guess what? On the right side of the bike, brown is the right turn signal. So I've got uh, this light housing back in place. I've got the other light housing at least mounted. I need to tighten down the bolts that are holding it and you can see that I left the cover off this time, the protection shield, because I figure I'm really going to try to get that rack on also. So I need to tighten down the four bolts that hold this down, two up top, one on the side, one on the other side that you already saw, and get the light bulb back in place for the turn signal, get the cover back on it over here, and then make sure everything still works. So then I'm going to start fishing the wires around where I need them, and I drilled my hole in the front of the fuel can holder to allow me to mount the unit. So I'll see how much more I can get done this evening, and then I'll follow up with you later. All right. So, here's what I did. This is my light controller. Grab it here so you can see it. This is the one I showed you a little while ago. So I've shortened the white ground wire. I'm just going to attach it onto the bolt that will hold this on. It's going right in the front of the fuel can holder here. So it'll sit up in front up here. Then <clears throat> I shortened all four of these wires going back to my pigtail. So I'm just going to run that down along here and just tie wrap it uh, somewhere over here just to keep it out of the way. And that'll give me something to plug the trailer wiring into. 
So, what I did, I ran all the lighting wires back into the rear tail light here, so you can see a little bit of it. Um, I'm gonna push that up and out of the way. I might put a tie wrap in there or something just to keep it up out of the way. But uh, then ran that up into the rear fender, came around and came out right down here where my hand is. So just came down where I ran the wiring for the winch control. So I ran that down underneath the calibar bar over here and around the right you can see the wiring coming out here and right over here to the unit itself. So again, like I said, this is going to go right here on the front of that and I'll tie wrap all this wiring up and out of the way. Then for the right side turn signal, I was able to, let me see if I can show you any of this, I don't know. Let's see if you can see it. Now do you see up in here where you've got that uh, little ridge, this here? So behind that is where the original wiring harness sits, going all the way back to the light here in the corner. So I pulled that harness up and out of there, and then just dropped the single wire in underneath it. I ran it all the way around the front, and down out underneath the side step. So it comes out over here, and is tie wrapped on down there. Goes across up here, you can see the wire potentially sticking out up here in the top, right there on my finger. And then I ran it across the top of my skid plate, and came out over here and ran it back along the bar to get back where the other lights are. Spliced everything together. I'm using those uh, weather resistant or weatherproof butt, uh, butt splices. So we'll get this bolted in and I should be ready to go. Cut off a few tie wraps and finished. Over here, I don't remember if I showed you this or not. It's been about another month since I was working on this project. So this is the rear cargo rack. So what I did, I took off the protective light shield that I had on here because I figured between the original bar down here and the new bar up top, I didn't need anything extra. So I got rid of that one in the middle. Um, <clears throat> what you have here, mine did not come with hardware. So I was able to reuse the bolts that hold the top of the rear suspension in place. So basically you just slide this rack forward and put it in on the outside of the suspension, but on the inside of the rear handholds. And I did have to spread them out a little bit, but it wasn't too bad. And actually, I didn't even have to use the rear stand. So these bikes, for those who aren't used to it, do come with the center stand here. I had some trouble. It just didn't bite well on the concrete, so I had trouble trying to get it up on there. Uh, but when, as it turned out, because I don't have any weight on the bike, I was able to unbolt the top of the suspension on both sides and it just stayed right where it was, so no problem. And then back here, <clears throat> these bolts needed to be longer. So originally, these were just attaching the bracket for this original bar to the fender here. Um, so you've got a nut inside, a lock nut, and then outside you just got that. So I had to get some longer ones, uh, since again it didn't come with the necessary hardware. There should have been some spacers that came with it, but I just found some uh, metal sleeve that was about the right width. Cut it to the right length to be able to space out, so this bracket here comes down on the outside of the original. And these keep it from biting in there too much, so it will give you a nice spot to push it against. Um, <clears throat> then I just uh, painted them with some bed liner and put them up in there. So it's nice and solid. It's not going anywhere. So you might be asking yourself, why did I feel I needed to put this on here? Obviously I've got a sidecar bike. I've got plenty of storage space. Even if I have a passenger over here, I've got the trunk to work with down in here. And then I've got the utility rack up here on the sidecar. And I could add a nose rack on the front of the sidecar if I wanted to. I've got this one over here for small stuff. So why do I need another one? Well, I live in a pretty hot part of the country. 
It's pretty common for temperatures to get up over 100 degrees, and yes, I will be moving the winch out of that spot to allow better airflow on the right head. But I wanted to use a cooler mount uh, cooling vest or cooling jacket. So the idea being I can put that thing back here and hook it up to power over here in the sidecar and then uh, just set it behind me. So it gives me the ability to still carry a passenger here if I want to instead of wearing a backpack style cooler. I don't know if I'll ever carry a passenger right behind me. Again, why would I need to? I've got the sidecar. But uh, that's what this was for, to give me a place to put something like that. Or I've seen some guys who have a small, almost mini keg style extra fuel tank that they put back here and then they can run the fuel line forward along here and dump it into the primary fill down underneath. So I don't know. Now there will be plenty of uses for this. And it gives me a little extra protection for the tail light. So let me get these bolted up. I'll show you what it looks like. And then I've got one more item here. The yellow fog lights that I mentioned in a previous video finally showed up. So I'm going to get these mounted. These should be a quick plug and play kind of thing because they're going to go right in place of these two. So they don't sell them individually anymore as far as I can tell, but what they do sell is the entire bracket here along with the lights. So I should be able to just remove four bolts, two on each side and pop this whole thing off, unplug the lights, and put the new one on in its place. So, let me get that open, and we'll see what that looks like for you, too. Okay, here we are. So, I'll drop the fuel can back in here pretty shortly. Let's take a look down here in the back. So, here's the pigtail. Got a couple of tie wraps on here holding it to the receiver. So, this, give, this should give me four flat trailer wire connections. I hope. I guess we'll find out when I try to connect something to it. Down in here, let's see if I can show you without making too much noise. Here is the unit itself, attached to the front here. I've got the wiring tied up along the side. And out front, these were really easy to replace. So as it turns out, these weren't pre-mounted on the bracket, which is perfectly fine by me. So these are the new yellow fog lights. Again, I did this because there's quite a bit of fog and low dust and other things around here. So I figured I wanted to have some yellow light that I could throw forward. So what you have here, you've got the bracket attached to the front bar. So this piece of plastic here. These bolts, there's one on each side and you've got nuts on the inside. Let me see if I can show you, there's one. And there's the other over there. So those go through a mounting hole on the light right there. And then you've got your wiring harness that's up and behind here with a couple of tie wraps in place to hold it in. So basically just had to unplug the old lights, remove those two bolts, put these two in place, put the bolts back on and plug it back in. And it works great. And turn it on. So the gear up has light control over here on this side. There we go. And there we are. Nice and bright and yellow instead of white. So what I'll do, these are still perfectly fine. I'm going to put them back in the boxes and hold on to them along with the extra bracket that came with this setup. Turn those off and I'll show you the rest of this. There we go. Okay. So what we have over here these were the boxes that contain the two lights. Here's the new bracket. We've got a new piece of wiring harness here. These are pieces that go underneath the bar to hold the bracket in place. So it's kind of a pinch mount. And then here's all your hardware. So I'm just going to drop everything in here. Keep it for spare parts just in case something breaks, and I think we're good to go. So, hope you all are enjoying whatever projects you're getting into out there. I'm hoping pretty soon I'll be uh, heading out and exploring some areas with the Ural. So around here we got a lot from the old, uh, old wagon trains and wagon routes going across the country. So I'm going to see if I can find some old stuff that's kind of forgotten and show you what it looks like around here. So hopefully soon different kind of video 
And I've got a couple others from a recent trip I just took that I'll be loading, uploading here shortly. So keep informed and I'll see you over the next horizon.